Hello everyone, this is Musawir Ghafri from Ghafri Academy and in today's lesson we are focusing on relative frequency and frequency density. Why we study relative frequency? Because we need to know the percentage wise contribution of every class interval and here we are having the list of colors purple color, blue color, pink color, and orange color, and their frequencies together. But we do not know the exact answer of how much every color is having contribution. So what we do, we study this relative frequency. And here what we do, we take sum up of all the frequencies, and the sum is 20. Then what we do, we divide every every frequency to the total frequency so exactly what we do 7 divided by 20 3 divided by 20 and we are getting the percentage and here there is a note in a relative frequency chart we list how often a data value occurs and we find its measurement from total frequency yes we did the same we found the percentage wise contribution of every class interval by dividing the frequency to total frequency and the sum of relative frequency should add up to one or hundred percent yes it has to add up to hundred percent because we are having these percentages 35 plus 15 plus 25 plus 25 will equalize to 100 percent or we can take it as one because one is equal to 100 percent and this is very much easy to understand the another one is frequency density what is frequency density in frequency density we study how much the class width of every class interval has differences when we study class density when the class width is different and here we are having different type of class intervals this is weight in kilogram of children we are having between 0 kilogram to 50 kilogram what we do here is we take class width of every class interval so we take we take 0 minus 10 uh, 10 minus 0 because this is the upper limit this is the lower limit so we subtract the lowest one from the uh, upper limit of every class interval so 10 minus 0 is equal to 10 20 minus 10 is equal to 10 we divide every lower limit from every upper limit this is as easy as you're finding the class width then we subtract 20 from 24 so 24 minus 20 is 4 30 minus 24 is 6 and 50 minus 30 is equal to 20 and here we are finding that every class interval is different every class interval has significant impact on this frequency distribution so now what we do for finding the frequency density we are having a formula and formula is equal to frequency divided by class width we are having the frequency and we have found the class width so we divide 6 divided by 10 15 divided by 10 16 divided by 4 21 divided by 6 and 18 divided by 20 and we are getting this result here 0 0.6 1.5 4 3.5 and 0 0.9 this is very much simple and here now we have found but we can illustrate it much further and much better in a histogram so what we do we take all these points here in y-axis we are having frequency density and x-axis we are having weight of children in kg how many kgs we are having between 0 to 50 so we are considering it as a class interval of 10 10 10 up to 50 and we are having a frequency density of between 0 point, uh, 0 0.6 to 4 so we are taking the distance of 1 for every frequency density here and we are finding the exact meaning of this frequency density so we join we join every point together and frequency density we are having 0 0.6 so we take 0 0.6 and and class width what we are having and class width we are having 10 so we take a class interval of 10 a width of 10 a width of 10 plus 0 0.6 so we join this histogram afterward we take another one frequency density is 1.5 so we take 1.5 this is here this is this point we take this point 
and how much is the class width the class width is also 10 so we take another 10 here and we join them we join the points and we find a new bar the another one is you are having a frequency of 4 so we take this frequency of 4 here from here to here and how much is the class width 4 is the class width so we take this 4 20 plus 4 this is 24 this is 24 uh, means we are having a class width of 4 plus a frequency density of 4 so we take it as the same and for another class interval we are having a class width of 6 and frequency density of 3.5 so we take this 6 20 plus 6 is becoming 30 so we take this much class width and 3.5 from here so we we will go from here to here and the result is this this bar is coming and the last one is 0 0.9 for frequency density and 20 for class width this is having the highest width so 30 when we are adding 20 class width it will become 50 and we are having a frequency density of 0 0.9 and we are taking it here this this histogram will explain everything very much deeply the size of every class interval is now visible to us and this is the benefit of graphical representation i hope you enjoyed this lesson if you are a new subscriber to this channel then press the like button and do not forget to subscribe and if you are already a subscriber i hope to see you again